before I start, uh, this is the way I turn pens. It's not necessarily the right way, not necessarily the wrong way, uh, but this is my demonstration, so this is the way that it's going to go. <laughs> uh, let's see, the tools needed. Uh, one is a, a, a scraper. I'm using this scraper from uh, Ken Blaine. He uses all the easy wood turning, carbide tipped uh, scrapers. Um, I think this will be my second time using it, but I felt the sharpness of my scraper and I opted to use a sharp, <coughs> sharp one today. Uh, so it, your scrapers, any kind of small chisels, I don't like using a roughing gouge to start out with this. I found that it chips out the wood um, really quick and then pff, you're pen is toast <laughs> from that point. So just small cuts with a small sharp tool, uh, maybe a fingernail gouge, um, just something small that doesn't hog out a lot of material at one time. And make sure they're, they're, they're sharp. Um, you'll get a smoother finish, you don't have much tear out, and you're gonna get a better product. A lot less time in the sand, sanding stage uh, and finishing stage. Um, same paper, I usually start out with an 80 or 100 grit after I'm done uh, finished turning, I guess. I go all the way up to 400 with my sandpaper. Um, I use the paper sheets and cut them into strips. Uh, Woodcraft has a spool of different strips that you can use, which is really handy. It comes in a box about so big, and it has five different uh, grits in there so you can just tear off little strips at a time and they're disposable and so you can just throw them away after you're done with your your sanding that grit. Um, a drill press, I like to use a drill press when you're drilling out your blanks uh, because it it gives you a consistent hole instead of using a handheld drill which you might wander uh, it's, it's just going to be a better end product if you use a drill press. Uh, I use a uh, a wooden clamp. Uh, it's an old-fashioned screw clamp that you can lay flat on your drill press. Uh, I use a square when you're squaring up your stock so you get a nice straight hole through it. This is also a self-centering um, uh, 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 gauge so you can mark the center of your uh, hole. I'll show you what these look like. When you buy your, your, your pen kits from Woodcraft, they come in all different uh, shapes and sizes, all different styles, all different finishes. You just go ask one of the guys there and they will help you out in picking a style. Uh, your cheapest one that you will find is a slimline, very small, uh, very usable uh, pen or pencil kit. Uh, the nice thing about those is that you can use pretty much any kind of three-quarter inch pieces of wood. Uh, if you go up to a bigger piece, bigger style, uh, like a Navigator or a European, you're going to want a bigger blank, like a one, one inch by one inch blank, uh, just so you're, you give yourself enough uh, material to go through your, your pen. So the, the first thing you're going to have is have to do is set up your pen blanks. Um, your directions that come with your pen kit, you can either get directly from one of the salespeople at Woodcraft, or you can go on their website, uh, look up on your pen kit, we'll have a number on it, you'll just go right to the website under keyword search, and it'll come up with your instructions right online, or you can just have your paper ones uh, at the lathe uh, when you go through your process. And it will include instructions uh, from start to, start to finish. The key part is when you start out is the drill bit or bits uh, diameter that you will need to drill out your pen blank with. And so what I did is bought, I think for $30 at Lowe's, came out with an assortment of drill bits, came out with, I think, 30 different, different drill bit sizes. They're not your usual, you know, 3 8 half inch, 5 16ths. They actually go into 11 64ths uh, for your pen blanks. So buying the assortment right off the bat, you're always going to have the drill bit that you need to do pretty much any pen blank. Okay? The reason that this is so important is because your pen kit comes with brass bushings, uh, longer ones, that are the basis of your pen. 
And so when you drill out uh, your hole for your, your bushing, uh, it is critical that it's the correct size. So when you glue in your bushing to your, your, your hole that you had just drilled, uh, the tight fit is going to ensure, um, uh, again, a quality product after you're done. Uh, what I use to glue uh, my bushings in is a thick CA glue. Okay. Uh, you start out with just inserting your bushing at the tip of your hole, uh, run a bead, and as I insert it, I twist it so you're getting a continuous uh, film of glue surrounding both your bushing and your inside of your, your, your blank. Okay. And then I always cut my uh, material a little bit longer than my, my insert uh, for finished sanding and or cutting after you're, you're um, done with the gluing drying process. And so you're going to want to trim it or sand it up to uh, your, your insert. Um, if you don't do it, uh, you're not going to get a tight fit when your final assembly is occurring. Uh, <coughs> and you'll get a sloppy looking product afterwards. Doing the finished sanding up to um, the bushing is going to ensure a, a good fit all the way around when your final assembly uh, is there. Uh, with your pen kit, when you purchase it, you're going to want to get a set of bushings for your pen kit. And what this allows you to do is it will mount on to your, your mandrel, which is something that you'll need for your, your pen kit also. Uh, it comes with a number two Morse taper bit, uh, Morse taper fit, so it fits into your, your headstock. Also has a uh, end on here that will fit into your live center, and then all of your pen blanks mount into there. So back to these bushings, they are made to fit on either side of uh, your inserts. Okay, and since I am using the, the Navigator set, it comes with two sets of bushings, one for the front, one for the, the back of your pen blank. And that slides on there as such. I have extras in case it comes short of your, your, your screw here, your bolt on. So I always just add on a little extra bushing there to get a tight fit. Now, if you really get into this, what I have done is I purchased just a fishing tackle box for all of the different bushings, labeled them accordingly, uh, according to pen type, pen kit type. And so I have all my bushings, I have my extras, I have um, everything I need for that pen kit and pen kit type uh, marked out accordingly, and I just stash it at the bottom of my... Uh, my drawers that have all my pen stuff in there. That just keeps everything organized because you have a different bushing set for a different pen kit and it gets really confusing after a little bit. And so this just keeps it all simple. Um, let's see, now back to sandpapers again. I'm sorry, I was getting a little off track there. Uh, another thing that I have purchased, which was really nice, is a micro mesh pad set. Okay, this goes up to, I believe, 14,000 grit. And I use this for acrylics. I use these for stabilized uh, wood. Um, anything I want, just a super glass finish on. Um, like your normal wood uh, blanks that you put in, uh, you go up to a 600, and then you would finish with a friction polish like uh, a Mylons, a Mylons uh, which is fine. Uh, when you go up to an acrylic or a stabilized pen kit, you wouldn't use this because this exceeds uh, your grit as far as your finish polish goes. And so your finishing is going to be a little bit different for those uh, uh, different pen kits. So I, uh, these come out individually, and so what I had done is just drilled a, a hole through them and zip tied them in order. And so when I need a uh, pad, I just use it, flip another one, use it, flip it another one, keeps it in order, I never have to guess. You know, I had a color chart uh, <laughs> on the back, so the, the lathe is going before and I'm looking for purple, or a type of purple, there's three purples I think in here. I'm like, oh, wrong one, I gotta start over again. And This just simplified everything. 
uh, let's see. With the micro meshes, I have found that if you use water, you know, kind of wet sanding, it was a better finish. You didn't have as much gunk uh, build up on your mesh if you use water. It was nice, clean finish. And so what I did is I just, I just went to Home Depot, bought a little spray bottle. Um, I have a couple of these laying around the shop anyways uh, for the different uh, turnings that I do. So it's a nice, again, nice, organized, easy way uh, to do your sanding. And as far as finishes go, um, I'm just kind of going through the different uh, tools that you could need before you start going. Uh, three different finishes that I'm, um, I've experimented with, and I guess it's a different application for everybody. There's three that I know of in particular. It is your Mylan's friction polish finish. Uh, there is a CA glue finish. Uh, and then the, the one I've been more successful with now is a furniture polish. So all these will have to be handy. It just depends on which kind of finish uh, that you want. All of them offer uh, different pluses, different minuses. Uh, I guess it's just whatever kind of look that you want after you're done or how, many, how much time you want to spend on your final finish and whatever you're comfortable with. All right. Another thing that you'll need is a uh, face mask. I use this for all of my turnings. Uh, I used the old Home Depot one at, at, at one time, just starting, and I've, I've wanted something that a little bit more comfortable uh, after wearing it for a couple of hours. So we have these uh, available here uh, at a, a drastic discount versus what you can buy it at Woodcraft. Um, but this is by far the, the most economical and most, more, most comfortable face mask that I've used. Uh, how much are they here? 25 bucks. It's a steal. And especially if one of these explode on you or you have a piece come off or sawdust or, you know, for any turning, you have to have a face mask. I, I've had a couple of members here that I've seen pictures of before and after on some accidents and it's not pretty. Um, it's just a good thing to always have, have on. And once you get used to it, it's really not that bad. Uh, so I'll get started on, on turning here. What I have here is a piece of uh, Buckeye Burl stabilized uh, blank. And so I've, I've got everything set up as far as the bushings go. Uh, one thing you'll want to make sure is that this, this copper nut here is tight because when you're turning it, you don't want these to, to move at all. Uh, an important part to your mandrel is once you you want as straight a mandrel as you can possibly get. Uh, my first couple I just tossed in a toolbox, it got bent, and a bent mandrel means you get an oblong pen. Uh, it doesn't fit to your finished bushings well, so take care of your mandrel. Uh, it's very important, it gives you a nice, you can use your mandrel for all of your pen kits. You don't have to buy a different mandrel for different pen kits. It's one use for, for all of them, so. I'm going to start by just uh, roughing it out. My main goal is just to get them round right now, and then I will start turning them down to your bushings. These bushings uh, are an indicator of the thickness, your finished thickness. And so you have lots of room to play between the bushings at whatever design you want to go with. I typically just stay with uh, a slight arc to it. It's more comfortable for my uh, personal use but you can do whatever you want in between these bushings, uh, as long as your wood meets these uh, very edges, because that's your edges of these bushings is what is gonna meet, uh, meet up to your finished pen. And so the closer you get to these bushings, the nicer your pen is gonna look. It's gonna look like a very nice uh, professional uh, outcome to it. So uh, I'll get started. I'm going to start by taking just small little strokes. Mm -hmm. Speed. Speed. I'm going to start around six here, so, uh, between one and ten. I'm going to start at six, see how it rides. Uh, if it starts to, to chunk on by me a little bit, I'll speed it up a little bit. But uh, whatever you're comfortable with.
It appears I have a bent mandrel. <laughs> I can usually tell if it's round by how smoothly uh, my cutting sounds and if it's a nice then you know that you're round. Uh, stop periodically to, to, to check it out if you'd like. Uh, it appears that I am perfectly round now. Uh, all right, so what I'm going to do now, now that's perfectly round, this is where you can do whatever you want. That's the cool thing about pens is you can, I mean, you can put a, a, a ridge in here, you can put a couple of lines, you know, with, you know, different parting tools. This is where you can get creative and do whatever you want. Um, you know, you can do, you know, uh, with the front of the pen, you can, you can do the little dip for your fingers, you can do little lines for, for grips. I mean, I like to envision the different pens that I see in Office Max, you know, the entire two rows of pens that they have to offer, uh, the different uh, textures that you can feel, or how, you know, the pen rests in here, uh, the nice thing about pens is that they're so inexpensive to turn. Uh, you can try one out, put it together, see what happens. If it doesn't work, give it to your wife. I mean, <laughs> do, do whatever you want. <laughs> Don't make this mistake, though. I had this happen. I made her this sweet red cedar pen, and I gave it to her, and she used it for her grocery list. And when she was done, she threw it away. <laughs> thinking that it was done, like the pen cartridge ran out, and I'm like, where did that pen I made you go? Oh, it ran out of wink, I thought we were uh, done, just threw it away. <laughs> so, anybody, you give it to anybody, please tell them you can buy refills, this is not a throwaway pen. <laughs> All right, too expensive to just chuck it. <laughs> you can't buy them 10 for a buck, please. <laughs> so, uh, again, I like just the traditional slight arc, so I am going to start with getting it a little more thinner, uh, thin it down just a little bit more, and then I will start to uh, work my way down to the bushings. Now the way I start out is work from the outside in. Uh, what I have run into is when I work in the middle, I sometimes go too deep, and now you're stuck with a very thin, straight, uninterest in, uninteresting pen. So if I work from the outside, uh, work in on either one of my blanks, uh, you have room uh, to fix things. Now, I'm not going to go all the way to the bushings with my scraper. Uh, the reason for that is because I like to reuse my bushings, and if I get too close, I'll start to take away from the bushing itself. I'll start turning the bushing. And then all of a sudden, uh, your, your pens, each time you put your bushing up, will get smaller and smaller and smaller, and it won't meet up to uh, your pen kit anymore. So uh, what I will do after I'm done turning it is I will sand uh, using the edge to the bushing, 
and so it takes off a little less material uh, on that bushing. You can fine tune with that, and so uh, I'll keep going. This is approximately the shape I, I like. It's starting to take shape. You can see what the wood is going to look like. This is, a, I didn't know how this was going to look like. Uh, um, for my bosses, I did a black buckeye burl and I did a blue buck, buckeye burl. Didn't have that much figure, but this is, uh, this is turning out beautiful. Uh, so I'm going to start with my, my sandpaper. And uh, I'm going to start with 80 grit. Uh, I'm going to do some, most of my flattening work with this. Uh, I'm going to use it between you know, two fingertips here work it back and forth. That's why I wasn't really concerned with getting this perfectly flat. I'm going to uh, hone it right in with, uh, with, this, with the sandpaper and the tension I put on that. That's going to smooth it out, get the, uh, get the finished bumps out of there. If you could uh, see my, my scraper going a little bit in, a little bit out, that was just, just due to the, the burl. Uh, softwood, hardwood, and it was real hard to keep it consistent. So uh, we'll keep her going. I like to use my fingers uh, as a backdrop, uh, kind of pressure, and, uh, putting pressure against the pen in the sandpaper. Again, going up to the bushings. AD grit is real nice for uh, doing off your final shaping. And it gets all those gouges out really, really fast.
One thing you want to be sure of is when you're using your finger is that it will concave uh, your sandpaper. So if you stay in one place too long, it'll follow the shape of your finger. So that's why I'm moving around uh, so much here. Clean your paper off often. Uh, if you don't, you just keep sanding sawdust. Great time to just look and see how your how your sanding is doing. Uh, I'm going to go up a little bit further uh, on the fronts of both of these. That appears to be nice. That is god awful. All right. Next is 120. Now once you get that base, uh, base sand done, the rest of the sanding should go really fast. So that's 120. Nice part about turning and sanding is if you see little lines coming through there, that usually means an inconsistency in sanding. And so if you make those lines go away, uh, yeah, it's feeling good. All right, 220 is next. Three twenty. And four hundred. do a final inspection with my actual sandpaper to make all make sure all of the uh, I guess sanding flaws uh, are out of it which sure it's expensive all right oh yeah now if just little itty bitty sander lines uh, like sandpaper lines you're, I mean, you got to get really close to look up. It's fine. Uh, this micro mesh is going to take care of that. All right. So. Oh, good at thought out. <laughs> it was a rock this morning when I got it out of my shop. <laughs> so just a quick little squirt, and uh, I'll just go through my grits uh, again accordingly. 
um, go all the way up to uh, my top one, and then put a furniture polish and that's it, okay? That has a nice color. Woo. That's one thing that you have to uh, decide also when you're picking your wood blanks and your uh, pen kits is your finish compared to the color. And I've done a couple where you know, I used a copper finish and it just didn't match the wood blank quite well. So just something that you learn as you, you know, you do a couple pens. So like this bushing, like a satin, or a, even a chrome would look nice. If you want to get a great idea of how many different pens are available, uh, go right into Woodcraft into their pen section. I think they probably got, it's got to be 100, 150 different types of pen kits available. And those are just the kits. That doesn't even include the, uh, the pen blanks. Now this is the same method I would use for acrylic. Uh, sanding, final sanding, just going through the grits because it, it's a clear plastic more or less is what you're sanding. If you do choose to do a, a piece of acrylic, like a clear uh, acrylic, some people don't know, uh, know this, but you can repair any gouges out of the acrylic with your CA glue. You just Put a little drop in there, wait till it's dry, and sand accordingly, and you would never even know that that little divot in your finished product uh, was ever there. Now after I was done with the 400 grit uh, sandpaper, if you had a regular piece of wood that you were turning for your pen blank, that's where you would apply your high polish friction and that is just done with a sock, rag, whatever. You apply it, it's a high speed friction so it's activated by heat. So you put it on slow so you get an even coat and then you crank that lathe right up and you more or less burn it uh, right in there. So three to four coats of that is great and then you're done with your piece. Uh, I'm choosing to use the micro mesh, get up to a really, really high sand, and then I'm going to use a furniture polish. The reason for that is, is out of experience, the Mylans, with your oils from your fingers, uh, breaks down your finish. I don't like using a lacquer or a polyurethane for that reason also. You get a dull looking product after probably a year of, uh, of using it. So I have gone to a furniture polish. Oh yeah, which you can, you know, it creates a, a hard finish and it's, you can reapply it uh, to make that luster reappear. And so that is it. I have, um, I don't anymore because I've heard that after four years that finish breaks down. Okay, cracks off. The, the finish breaks down. So that's why I don't use it. I, when I did use it, I used a thin CA glue. I tried medium and thick. Thick was horrible because uh, you applied it and it would gum up. You'd have high spots, low spots, just wouldn't turn out. The medium, kind of the same thing. A little less, you know, obviously because it's a medium thickness. But the thin, you could put several, several thin coats of the CA glue on there. Um, wait till it dries, reapply another one, and then you can after you build up a big enough coat, then you can go through uh, your sand again. See if you only put two or three coats of the CA finish on first and then try to sand, uh, you can sometimes burn through the CA finish. So if you put several coats on, uh, you'll have a little bit more of a buffer zone when you're sanding through your finishes and then you'll still have some leftover 
uh, when you're done. Uh, so use the thin CA glue, use a cloth, and then several coats of buildup. Uh, if you use an accelerator, don't spray it too close to it. You'll get a white film in your finish. So stay your recommended 8 to 10 inches away when you do squirt a little bit of accelerator on there, uh, and you'll still have a, a, a great finish after you're done. Now, after you're all set with this, you remove your pieces, uh, and then you refer back to your instruction booklet as far as the assembly goes uh, of your final pen, and that is it. Okay, are there any questions at all? Um, what brand do you like, uh, yeah. what of, brand of furniture polish? Uh, I got some Minwax here. I, I have Johnson's at, at home also. I think it's pretty much all the same. Um, I use it on my, it's just in the shop, which is nice. I use it on my table uh, saw tops and band saw tops, so it's just always right there. It's a paste. Yep, it's a paste wax. Okay, so. Yep, I just use whatever rag I have. Um, put some on, and you just wipe it right on. Now there's a, a little time period where uh, I think you got to give it 15 or 20 minutes for it to harden. 15 minute time period. Because uh, what it does is it gets in there and it hardens. Uh, the paste wax hardens on top of the wood. And so it is a great finish coat. Um, it's durable and you can just reapply it if it, you know, it's just like regular furniture wax. Pardon? No, it's off and you just rub it right in. So you don't turn the lathe on at all? No. Nope. That's not a friction. No, nope, it's not a friction. It's just uh, a manual application. And so it gives it a really neat, after it's polished off, it gives it a really nice satin finish to it. It's not a clear gloss and it's not a flat. It's, a, it's just a nice looking feel uh, to the whole thing. I'd let it sit on there for 15 minutes. But I mean, this is just what the two minutes it's been and look, look at the great result you have there. So I like the satin finish because it doesn't take away from the character in the wood. You put a gloss, your attention is directly, is directed onto the sheen of it. And whereas the satin finish, the character of the wood comes out. You got a really nice pen at the end of, what, what did this take, 20, 30 minutes uh, to do from start to finish? You got a really nice, fast uh, turn that you can do with a great result that people can use for years, years to come. So, any other questions? Do you um, sand? I noticed you when you're sanding, you know, around when you're turning. But when you stop, do you sand the other way to remove any marks? Like a reverse? No, just like with a stop, just to go the other way to remove the original grain. 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 Oh, sure. No, uh, when I when I go through my uh, sanding grits, it takes care of those rings. Don't skip your grits. If you noticed, I went right from 80 to 120. Um, don't, don't go to 220. You'll be there forever trying to sand out those rings. But as long as you don't skip your grits, um, you'll eliminate those rings as you go through your progression. But as, as you go through your progression, like after I was done with 120, I inspected it to make sure all those rings were gone. And so the only rings that are left are the 120 rings. And so that's when you go up to 220, that'll take care of your 120 rings, and so on and so forth. That's why you go through your grits. My pen blanks? Woodcraft. Nice. What's that? It's kind of, I would compare pen turning to you know, going to a movie, you know, movie rental place. It's an impulse buy. You know, I want to watch a movie. What kind? Eh, what do they have there? I want one of those, one of those, and one of those. Same thing with pen turning. You don't go there with, I personally don't go there with something in mind unless a customer comes up to me and says, I have this pen blank in mind with this pen trim kit in mind. Then I would probably, if they didn't have a woodcraft, I'd go on like penstate.com. Is a great resource for, for pen kits. Um, you can just Google it if you don't find what you want at Woodcraft. But yeah, I don't have anything in mind when I go there. I just know that I want a pen. 
I want one of these, this looks good with that. So I don't put that much thought into it. So the question is, it's probably pretty basic to everybody, but I'm kind of new. Okay. Um, you talked about stabilized, you know, so that this is stabilized versus. Yeah. And I think I understand that, but I wonder if you could explain that. I don't understand it fully myself, but um, please, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but what a stabilized pen blank is, is if you have a piece of, um, like Ohio Buckeye Burl is pretty fragile. It, uh, in my experience with turning Buckeye or spalted Buckeye, uh, it's very dusty, it's not very dense, and so what they do is they stick the pen blank coated with a resin that, in a pressure pot, I believe, a uh, different way of doing stabilizing, but uh, in my experience, the resin soaks into the wood, making it essentially 50-50 wood and resin. Just really hardens it and makes it just a, uh, yeah, it, it's a stable piece of wood uh, at that point. Makes it continuous throughout the entire thing. And then this is also a dyed, it's dyed brown, and so that also is impregnated into the wood, and so. And so again, this is this was just very very basic. If this if you start getting into it and just become fully addicted to it, there's so many different places that you can go with it. It's such a neat neat skill to have. So thank you for listening to my rambling. I appreciate your time, and hopefully this is something good. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.